Hi, kindergartners. Today, I'm going to be reading our final part of Colonial Towns and Towns People. And today, lesson four is all about different colonial jobs. So the first job we're going to read about, read about is cloth makers, spinners, and weavers. In colonial times, people had to make their own cloth from materials they would find on their farm. Most farmers sheared wool from sheep they raised on their farms. On a few farms where cotton was grown, farmers picked cotton from cotton plants that grew in their fields. The farmers' wives cleaned, combed, dyed, and spun this cotton or wool into thread before weaving it into cloth. They would use spindles or spinning wheels to turn the materials into yarn or thread. Once they had the yarn or thread, they could create clothes by weaving the materials together on a loom. So you can see how the farmers went from either having their sheep and shaving the sheep or picking cotton, like little cotton balls, and they would use this spinner down here to take those clumps and turn it into a nice, long, thin piece of yarn or string. Then they would use this down here called a loom and that would sort of tie all of the little yarn and fabric together to make a big piece of cloth. Now, you might be wondering what they do with all that cloth that they make. Dressmakers, tailors, hatters, and cobblers were more people who helped make clothes in colonial times. In the old days, there were no racks full of dresses for women to try on. It took a lot of time for a dressmaker to make a dress, so she wanted to make sure someone would buy every dress made. When a woman came in looking for a new dress, the dressmaker might show her some patterns designed according to the latest fashions. The woman could choose a pattern and fabric she liked best. Tailors did the same kind of work as dressmakers, but they made clothing for both men and women. People who wanted new clothes could visit a tailor and have their measurements taken. Almost everyone in early America wore a hat. In fact, it was considered strange or rude to walk around bareheaded. Men wore hats with brims and women wore soft bonnets. People wore hats to keep their heads warm and dry, to keep the sun out of their eyes, and to protect the expensive wigs they frequently wore. People who made men's hats were called hat makers or hatters. Of all their clothing, shoes were the hardest for farmers to make themselves. So when a farmer needed a new pair of shoes, he would visit the cobbler or shoemaker. The cobbler would make shoes to order, just as it was done with the dressmaker, tailor, or the hatter. So when we need clothes, we might go to a store and just pick something off the rack to buy. But a long time ago, it took so long to make every single thing that you would have to go in and say, I need a purple dress and it needs to fit me. And then the dressmaker would have to make it. Or I need some brown shoes. Here's my shoe size. And then they would make the shoes. So if you had something fancy, like an event to go to, you'd have to tell them a long, long time, like months before what you need made, and then they would take all that time to make it. Bricklayers and masons. The bricklayer builds walls and houses using bricks. Bricks are made from clay, extremely fine red soil that comes from the earth. A long time ago, people discovered that if you mixed clay with a little water, shaped it into a block, and then baked it in the hot sun, it would dry out and harden into a solid brick. In this picture, you can see a bricklayer using the bricks the way it was done 300 years ago. 
he is using a special tool called a trowel and a spread called the mortar. Mortar is a really sticky, gooey material made of sand, water, and a type of crushed rock called lime. Once the bricklayer has laid the mortar evenly with his trowel, he will add another brick to the wall. If the bricklayer is good at his trade, his wall will be straight and strong and last for many years. A stonemason, or a mason for short, builds walls and houses with stones. You can see the difference between the bricks up here. They're like red rectangles. Down here, they're a mixture of stones. Just like the bricklayer, the mason can use mortar to stick stones together. Can you see the mortar in the spaces between the stone and this chimney? While bricks are mostly the same size and shape, stones come in all shapes and sizes. The mason has to be careful to make sure that each, each piece fits together closely with the pieces next to it. There we go. Carpenters. When a carpenter builds a house, he builds from the ground up. He begins by building the frame of the house and the carpenter is using wood. The frame gives the house its shape and holds everything together. The frame holds up the walls, the roof, the doors, and the windows. If the carpenter does his job well, the end result will be a beautiful house that keeps rain and wind out for years and years. We know that many early American house builders were true experts at their trade because many of their buildings are still standing today, as straight and tall as ever. So in some places, especially near Boston and then in some other areas, there are actually houses that were built in colonial times and are still there today, which is so crazy to think about that they've been standing for hundreds and hundreds of years. Blacksmiths were some of the most important tradespeople in town because they made all the tools people needed to do their jobs. They made chisels for masons and hammers and nails for carpenters and cobblers. They made household items like kettles, cooking pots, candle holders, and other utensils. They also made horseshoes, hinges, knives, and swords, locks, and keys, and much more. You'd be surprised at the number of things people used in everyday life that came out of a blacksmith's shop. To do his work, a blacksmith needed five basic things. He needed some metal to work with, something to heat the metal in, something to move the hot metal from one place to another, something to put it on, and something to hit it with. Blacksmiths in early America worked mostly with iron. Iron is a very strong metal, but when it, it is heated in the fire, it becomes soft and pliable. That means it can be shaped into whatever shape the blacksmith wants. So you can see up here, the iron is starting out like a long stick, but after heating it up, when it turns that yellow color, you can bend it and you can create something like this. This down here is a horseshoe. It goes on the bottom of a horse's foot to protect their foot. So it's pretty interesting. There are many traditions and jobs that got their start during colonial times and are still important jobs today. It's interesting to see what the world looked like many years ago. You can see here that their clothes and some of the ways that they did thing in things in colonial times is really different than what we do today. But if you think about it, today there's still people who make clothes, there's still people who build houses, there are still people who have to make things out of stone and brick, and there are people who make tools that we use all the time. We have things like knives and forks and spoons in our kitchens and someone has to make them. So it's interesting to see that some of the jobs from colonial times are still jobs today. Bye friends, thank you for reading with me today.